Joseph Carl Smith, Shaping the Far Future. Joseph, round of applause. Hi, everybody. OK, so this is a project in population ethics. Um, and it's a bit complicated, so I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on motivating the problem that I'm trying to solve um, and getting you interested in that. Uh, and then if you're interested in my proposed solution, uh, you can talk to me or check out my poster. Uh, so it seems to many people, including myself, that we generally have stronger reasons to help existing people uh, than to create new people. Um, so here's a case illustrating that intuition. A has just been born with a rare disease that will kill her at age 40. You can cure her of this disease such that she will live to 80 instead, or you can use a person creating machine to create two B people who will each live until they are 80. All of the life years in question will be of identical, very high quality, and your actions will have no impact on anyone else. What should you do? So take a second, consult your conscience. Uh, now I'm going to give you the answer. Uh, <laughs> it seems to me and to many other people that you should cure A in this case. Now you might disagree. Um, it's, I was kidding out about it being the answer. Um, and if you disagree, uh, I'd have some other questions for you, but mostly this is not your project. Uh, the project is uh, to try to say what uh, general theory we might be able to propose that would capture this sort of intuition. Um, and that's a project about which a number of recent writers, including a number in the effective altruism community, express pessimism. Uh, so here is the problem. Uh, one initially attractive explanation of why we should cure A rather than create B1 and B2 is what I'm calling anti-worse offness, um, which is the claim that we have especially strong reasons to make sure that people are not worse off than they would have been had we acted otherwise. Um, so the way that explains the case in question is that if we create B1 and B2, then A is worse off than she could have been because we could have cured her. But if we cure her, there's no one such that they are worse off uh, than they would have been um, because there's no one else at all uh, in this scenario. B1 and B2 don't exist, and you can't be worse off if you don't exist. Um, so the idea is we're rejecting this image that there are these sort of ghostly people waiting in the heavens uh, who are mad that you didn't create them. The, the sort of general intuition is like, that's not how things are. Those people aren't real um, yet. Now, uh, the problem is that there is this other intuition, which I'm calling the non-identity intuition, um, namely that we also have strong reason to create better lives rather than worse lives, even when doing so alters which people we create. Um, and in those sorts of cases, if we create the worst lives, the people we create are not worse off than they could have been. Um, because they wouldn't have existed had we done something else. It's just that we created worse lives uh, than we could have. Uh, so here's another case illustrating this intuition. A person creating machine is in the midst of creating three people, and you cannot shut it off. Currently, the machine is broken, and it infects any person it creates with a rare disease that kills them painlessly at age 40. It has just created A and infected her with the disease. You can cure A, or you can fix the machine, thereby preventing it from infecting the final two people it creates. However, doing so will alter which people the machine creates. Instead of creating C1 and C2, it will create B1 and B2. It's a very everyday normal situation. <laughs> <laughs> Consult your conscience. Um, here's the case in chart form. Uh, so it seems to me in this case that you should fix the machine, um, thereby preventing two instances of the disease rather than one. Um, so in this case, uh, on that intuition, and we can fudge the numbers if you don't quite have the intuition yet, make it five people if you like, um, uh, our non-identity reasons to create B1 and B2 rather than C1 and C2 are strong enough to outweigh our anti-worse offness reasons to cure A. Um, and the challenge is to tell a story about our non-identity reasons that compa that's compatible both with that verdict and the verdict in the original case I showed you at the beginning. Um, so we can look at them side by side. Uh, so we see that in the first case, we think that cure is better than create. Um, but we think that future health is better than present health, or at least I do. You might be, have very different uh, intuitions. Um, and that's a bit weird. It seems like we think there's strong reason to create B1 and B2 rather than C1 and C2. But we don't think there's strong reason to create B1 and B2 rather than no one. Um, and the question is, like, why would that be so? And can we build a coherent population ethics that uh, captures this pattern of intuitions? Um, while being plausible about other things as well. Um, 
So that's uh, the project of the paper. Um, I'm not actually sure that the project succeeds. Uh, my aim was to sort of do better than uh, some competitor views. Um, and I think there's, there's been some moderate success in that vein. Um, I don't necessarily think the view is true. Uh, but uh, it might be interesting and worth engaging with uh, despite, despite its falsehood. Um, so this is a quick summary. Um, and uh, if you'd like more information, you can uh, talk to me or check out my poster. There's a quick moral for EA, which is that we should still prioritize the far future. Okay, thank you. <laughs>